So really it was uh, the environment around me. So the city of Chicago, like, uh, I didn't have much going on. I was getting into trouble. I uh, happened to be involved with a recruiter that was getting guys into the Air Force. He was like, hey man, this is probably a better option for you to take up. So but, all right, I'll try it out. And uh, the recruiter didn't sell me a lie, got me a good job. And uh, that's, why I came, that's why I came in. I wanted to continue the legacy of my family, rich military heritage. My father was an army. World War II veteran. My eldest brother was an Army chaplain. My second brother was an Army medic. And I was the first female in my family to become both an Army and Air Force veteran. And I wanted to school my career opportunities as well. So I was the first person in my immediate or extended family to do anything military related. And um, I was mainly looking for colleges that had good engineering schools. And the Air Force Academy popped up on my radar because uh, a friend of mine just got into the Naval Academy. And uh, with that, I saw an opportunity to, uh, to serve, to give back, be a part of something bigger than myself. And I'd seen quite a few you know, role models in my past that had served before. And, uh, just the, the way in which they carried themselves really, you know, spoke of, I don't know, spoke volumes about, you know, like the amount, the, the amount or how much they'd grown. And whenever they talk about, you know, serving, it, it was always bigger than them. Like there was a bigger cause. There was a people that they were supporting. There's an opportunity to serve, opportunity to be a part of something bigger than myself, give back and grow and study engineering. I think the biggest influence to in join the military was my father. He was uh, enlisted also in the Air Force. He was a crew chief and a load master for a C-5. So being stationed at Dover Air Force Base, he was really my biggest influence to join the military. Just seeing him succeed throughout the ranks and provide for his family was my biggest influence. I really just wanted to get out my home state, my home town. I ain't like doing the same thing every day. Not everybody else, my friends, just lounging around or going outside doing nothing basically, or working a dead end job. So I wasn't going to go National Guard at first, but I decided to go Air Force because my friend was in the Air Force already. He was security forces, you just tell me about it. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna just do the Air Force thing. So I just dove right in, no research, nothing, just came straight in. Some of the influences that uh, initially convinced me to join started off when I was little uh, and just my uh, fascination for flight. Um, when I was a kid, my dad used to take me to our local municipal airport just to kind of watch planes take off and land. And uh, eventually every weekend, he'd just take me down there, just hang around. And uh, some of the pilots that would go, some of the private pilots that would go in and out would just start taking me up for flights randomly uh, throughout the day. And that's really where my passion for flight and planes uh, just began. There have been quite a few challenges. I think the biggest, like uh, some of the biggest ones are navigating um, the unspoken rules and unspoken standards that apply to me and might not apply to my white counterparts. Um, and understanding like, you know, how I need to, how, you know, how I need to step up my game to, if I want to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Um, another huge challenge is just navigating like the cultural undercurrents that that are rarely uh, sympathetic to, to, to black people. Right. So um, I'll say probably the biggest one that that uh, we deal with as, as African-Americans is that uh, I was raised to to conduct myself and uh, make um, the majority comfortable when I'm around. I wasn't like raised to be myself. So that that in and of itself is a problem that at the time, you know, I just wasn't too mature enough or didn't see it, and nor did my parents. Parents teach that to me, but that's just how I was raised. But when you come into an environment like this, you're raised, hey, uh, you need to make sure that the majority is, is comfortable, not the minorities, because I'll speak a different way when I speak with minorities. I'll speak one way when I speak with the majority. And so uh, that I say is, is a problem. And then once I self realized that, and uh, just actually just start being myself, it comes off more genuine, you get a different response versus uh, the canned responses that you normally get. So I said, that, that's a big one that you deal with on the side of the house. 
Yes, one of the challenges I remember facing is during the time when I wanted to move up in the ranks and get promoted, I was told that uh, at that time I had to have a waiver to submit a package to get promoted. And I was told that they were not, uh, the office was not accepting waiver packages. But I was just really uh, curious about that because another person was submitting a package for a waiver. But the person in the office told me that they were not accepting packages. And so I was disappointed about that. But because of my rock solid foundation in the Lord, he gave me a test of fortitude to pursue that. And I spoke with the first sergeant of another unit who submitted a package and I got the template from her. And as a matter of fact, at that time, the, uh, the commander uh, was not open to uh, submit packages to the high command as well. So a new commander came and it wasn't just by consequence or chance, it was by divine appointment of the Lord. And he submitted my package and that's how I was able to get promoted to Senior Master Sergeant of the Air Force. So no one in my immediate family, uh, besides my granddad, uh, served prior to me. So I never really had uh, uh, a, a role model or a, or a path forward that I could just follow strictly to understand what I'd be doing when I eventually joined the Air Force. So for the most part, it's mainly been developing my own structure of what I think an officer was supposed to be in the Air Force, because there hasn't really been a lot of, uh, of, uh, of involved examples for me to really uh, take heed to. Um, that's probably been one of the biggest things I think has been the most challenging, is just not having a lot of uh, people who really look like you to uh, guide you in the exact way that you want to go. So that's probably been one of the biggest things that I've had to overcome. But eventually throughout my time, I've, I've uh, gained more mentors, more people who have been through similar paths that I have and look like me, and they've really taken, taken me under my wing and showed me some of the key things that uh, I didn't really understand when I first joined that I'm able to uh, take into now. So some of the obstacles and challenges I've faced in my 14 year career so far is just finding that diversity and inclusion at the top ranks of my career field. Just having that inclusion and that representation at the top to see things my way or see things that need to be perceived as, as different or a different way of thinking, different innovation and things of that sort has just been some of the obstacles that I've had to overcome. Yes, I do carry that sense of pride. I had an opportunity to meet the retired Chief Master Sergeant Richardson, who was on a mission sent by the Air Force to integrate the, the Air Force. So I had a chance to sit and uh, listen to his stories, and I'm really touched by the, the, uh, the movie which showed the Tuskegee Airmen Palace and how they faced so many uh, uh, challenges while they was in the military and just the, the strength that they had to pursue and to go above these challenges by completing their goals and just perseverance. That stayed, uh, that thought just stayed lingered in my heart and that helped me to be encouraged to uh, think about our rich heritage and to uh, stand firm and to pursue my goals and to not give up and, uh, and that's what I did. So the sense of pride that I have in my African-American heritage as far as being in the military brat, my dad was in the military, also my uncle, several cousins, my grandfather was in the military. Then also being stationed at Langley, Virginia, I had a chance to meet some of the red tails, what we call them, you know, Tuskegee Airmen. So sitting there, their struggle through the movie and then actually meeting them in person was definitely uh, a career defining moment for me. And I, I would definitely appreciate their, their struggle, their fight for African-Americans throughout all military ranks. Absolutely. Um, I've drawn inspiration from uh, multiple people in and out of the service uh, that have influenced uh, uh, how I serve. Some of my favorite role models include Chappie James, uh, Ben Davis, Mae Jameson, um, like leaders, engineers, uh, science, in, uh, for, for me, Jameson, even an astronaut. Um, and what I loved about them is that, you know, they all, I mean, they're all black and they all were like reading their stories. A lot of the things that they encountered, you know, carry the same overtones and undercurrents that 
I'm countering, seeing what they were able to do, like, you know, in spite of that, um, really inspires me. And also the, you know, the, the nuance and grace and gracefulness and, um, yeah, even, even with, you know, really adversarial headwinds, you know, they just seeing how they did it, it's really inspired me. Absolutely. Uh, so first joining the military, figuring my way out, figuring out what the military had to offer. And then as I start seeing new things, I used to, uh, see like the cool guys are the cool guy stuff, right? And one of those things are uh, jumping, parachute activities, right? So I started looking at that and I, I didn't know that the whole, that there was a whole movement, a whole wave of, of original black jumpers. And so that's the, uh, the triple nickel. So they were an alpha company, uh, parachuting battalion. And I was like, man, that's, that's, that's pretty unique that those dudes were the, pretty much the test bed for our, do blacks have the competency to do jump operations? And those dudes have been known for their professionalism and how they carried out jump operations from that time. So I was like, man, I want to get airborne and, and do it just like those dudes. I think that would be so awesome. I think it's a great idea. And I think that's pretty awesome. Man, that's, that's a great opportunity for this local area to see the history. You know, Eglin being the largest military installation in the U.S. and such a diverse community and history built by African-Americans, I think it would be a great thing for the military community as a whole to see the contributions from African-Americans throughout history.